Hey everybody and welcome to a Retro Games Party Tech video. So today we're going to be having a look at one of my favourite games from the classic arcade scene. This is Pac-Man by Midway. Uh, Pac-Man was originally released by Namco in 1980 then licensed by Midway in the US and mostly over here uh, by Midway. Anyway, so what we're going to look at today actually is a problem with arcade collecting and keeping cabinets original and the fact that, well, you don't really, not all everybody wants to drop coins in. But all the games obviously were developed for the idea of coin operated playback. So you'd have a game, it'd be running in what's called a track mode, which is what this is, and it'd have game over in the centre of the screen there, and it'd show you what's going on on the game, and then down the bottom here it'd say credit zero. So what about when you when you collect these games like I do and like many others do? And you have the cabinet, these games you want basically to, have to play on your own, you don't want to be able to you don't want to have to keep putting coins into them. Well in most cases for things like Pac-Man and things like that, in fact pretty much every game, there was a free play mode. And the only problem with the free play mode was this. <clears throat> Unfortunately the screen would stay on that screen static and you'd be able to press start and it would work. But if you're a collector, you, you know, it's not all the time that every machine's going to be in play and therefore you don't want to just have that because that will burn into your monitor eventually. So the, the free play mode on this game just sits there and sits there and sits there. And it's activated by a couple of options which is down here on the PCB. In fact, it's activated by those two. They're on there which makes it in free play. If I turn them off and then reset the game, it will go over back into regular coin operated mode waiting for a credit. So I've pressed the credit simulator button over here on this uh, on the test bench. There we go. And uh, press the start button. And, and Pac-Man nice, nicely sets off. Okay, so a lot of people on the net have managed to do hacks and modifications for their various boards. And one of them is Pac-Man. There's a guy online called Sousa. Uh, who uh, I'll put a link in the description below and he has done a modif he's done a couple of modifications actually he's done a modification with a high score he's done a modification with a high score save which lets you put initials and everything and he's done a four in one modification that lets you play both Pac-Man and MS Pac-Man in its regular and its speed up versions as well so what we're going to do today is we're going to fit the free play version of it the one that uh, the very ba very very basic version of it so i've downloaded the roms from uh, from susa's website and i've already been and burnt them to two eproms over here with my eprom programmer now what i want to let you all know about is that there are different types of eproms very very early manufacturer seem to use models called 2532 and other ones use ones that were called 2732. And that's a 2732, and that's a 2532, next to each other. And they're both the same storage size. They'll both store 2K worth of data. And the problem is the pinouts are different. They're the same physical chip size. Uh, they hold the same amount of data. They're even programmed by the same voltages. But they are different pinouts. This has been plaguing me for a couple of hours today. So it wasn't the fact that uh, I, I I was struggling to get these to work. Uh, I kept re rewriting the ROMs and re-blanking them and rewriting them and still nothing would work. The game just wouldn't boot. Anyway, so asked for a little bit of help on UK back. Thanks, guys. And somebody said to me, yeah, they're definitely a 2532, which I was looking through the schematics and everything. And, well, I hadn't actually spotted that, uh, that there was a note there that says use 2532s. So... Thanks very much to those guys. I have now got this sorted out. What we'll do next is we'll just pop those ROMs into the two sockets. These are labelled up 6E and 6F. We'll pop these into the 6E and 6F position there and see what happens. Right then, that's the 6E and 6F ROMs replaced with the new ones. And the ones that sat over there. Now these are original. I can't reuse these. These are the original, original mask ROMs that came from Midway. So all I can do with those is put them, uh, put them into a box, to be honest. And if I ever need to revert the board back, I can do. What I'll, what I'll likely do is put these two EPROMs in a protective bag and put them in the uh, coin box somewhere in the cabinet. <coughs> now, those are in there. Let's 
power up and see what happens. So we have Pac-Man booted up again. And can we press the free can we press the start button? Oh no. You know why? Because we haven't told the game we want to go into free play mode. What the what the author's done is he's made it actually replace the proper free play mode. So some of them just sort of hack the way into the coin mode full stop and provide a free play, you know, press button to start and you don't have a coin option at all, go back to the old ROM set. So what we'll do now is we'll turn off, switch off, go down here, set these dip switches over here to both be on, and that will put us into free play mode. Power up. We should see at the bottom of the screen now is free play. And pressing the start button. There you go. Great stuff. Okay. Well, we'll leave it there for that one. I just wanted to sort of show what, we, what we've done. This isn't going to be the last one for this Pac-Man board because I'm going to actually do the bigger mod to it. I'm going to next up get the um, do a, the high score uh, full mod to it, which involves also replacing uh, 6H and 6J and doing a mod over here on the RAM section. So I've got um, because the RAM board, the modification that's required is to basically lift these, uh, lift two of the RAM chips out, put them into a daughter board, and then there's a, an NV RAM, non volatile RAM. Uh, that sits on there, and all they do is just literally piggyback, piggyback the address, power, and data lines. But the uh, the select line for the chip, which tells it to come active, uh, is pinned off another place over here. Um, I think I can actually build one myself, so I'll get the relevant headers and, uh, and build a little kit board up. So we'll do another video when I get around to doing that. But for now, the main thing is that on the cab that this belongs to, which is the Zachariah Puckman cab, I can take away. Uh, the coin button on it and revert it back to that and you'll be uh, quite happy to just be in free play mode. Ah, <sighs> finally. <laughs> I don't actually like putting the coin buttons on the bottom of the cabs. It's not something I enjoy having to do, but it beats having to keep going around and crediting them up a million times or um, having to let people open your coin doors when they come around to play on the machines who, you know, maybe aren't that uh, arcade savvy. So anyway, that's it for this video. Um, if you've enjoyed what we do, do uh, ask us questions in the comments below or find us on Facebook or uh, on Twitter. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button because we've got more videos coming soon. I know a load of people want to know about what's going on with the new arcade and everything like that. And I promise you, I've got some information coming up soon. We've got a launch party coming up uh, for it. And the so expect video and then details of how you can get to come and visit us after that all right so until the next video take you later